Hi students! In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the calculations for experiment 8 because I realized that part of this experiment had something called molarity in it and that's a concentration and we don't usually get to molarity until chapters 9 and 10. But it's not that bad, so I'm going to go ahead and show you this reaction, which is magnesium metal in copper sulfate solution. So it's analogous to the reaction that you guys did in the Experiment 8 lab. Also, please excuse the formatting errors. Uh, when I transfer it from PowerPoint to Notability, sometimes things get a little messed up like probably the 75.0 milliliters should all be on one line and the four should be a subscript not a regular four but we'll be okay with it okay so what we have is in this reaction i have on this slide i'm dropping some magnesium into some copper sulfate we're doing a single replacement reaction and we're getting copper as one of our products. Now again, this is not the exact reaction that you guys are doing. This is an analogous reaction. So we can work through the math on this and if you follow along, you should be able to do the math on uh, your experiment eight. Okay, so it says we place 1.50 grams of magnesium metal into 75 milliliters of a 1.00 in that big M right there. That is molarity. Except the way we say it is a one molar solution of copper two sulfate. So I'm sorry about that, but that's just the way we say it. One molar without the ITY on the end copper two sulfate solution. Now, what's gonna happen is we're gonna produce 3.15 grams of copper, and how you would get that is you would filter this solution like I did on the video, and the copper would be on the filter paper. You'd let that dry, and then you'd put that on a balance and get this weight right here. Okay. So what we are doing, so if you guys follow along with the Experiment 8 worksheet, what you guys will come to first is an area that says, please balance the equation. Now what we have is instead of aluminum foil, we have a piece of magnesium metal. So we have a magnesium strip. So it works exactly the same, but we just have to adjust it a little bit for magnesium. So we're going to write out the balanced equation and we're going to put in all of the physical states. So we have magnesium reacting with copper sulfate and the copper sulfate is dissolved in water. So we put AQ there, meaning aqueous. Whatever has an AQ next to it is dissolved in water. And what we're going to produce is magnesium sulfate. And copper solid. And you guys can see the copper right here. Now, how did I know that the other product was magnesium sulfate? Well, you've been told that this is a single replacement reaction and magnesium comes on in and it replaces copper, so it bumps it out and that's what we have. Now, magnesium, what kind of charge does it like to do? Well, it is in column two or 2A. So when it goes to its ionic form, it is plus two. And if you look at your polyatomic ion chart, you'll see that sulfate is minus two. So we only need one of each of those in order to form our compound magnesium sulfate. Okay, so we gotta make sure that we get everything um, 
right uh, for our ratios of our ions together and for our formulas for our compounds. Now we have to balance this equation. Now the balancing of this equation might be different from the balancing of your equation when you guys do aluminum. So please uh, be careful of that. Now, when we go to balance, we'll probably look at magnesium first. And if we look at the reactant side and the product side, we can see that we have one magnesium each. That's good, we're balanced there. We've got one copper on each side, good, we're balanced there. And when we did balancing equations, I told you guys to keep the polyatomics together as sets. And we can see that we've got one sulfate on the reactant side and we have one sulfate on the product side. So this reaction is already balanced for us. So if we need it, we can just go ahead and put a bunch of ones there. Now again, when you guys use aluminum, you might not have a bunch of ones. You might have some twos and some threes in there. So please be careful of that. All right, so the first thing says, what is the volume of your one molar copper sulfate solution? And back here on this slide, we said that we had 75 milliliters of our one molar copper sulfate solution. So right there, we just write 75 milliliters. And what is the mass of our metal? And in this reaction, we're using magnesium. On your reaction, what you'll do is you'll look on your worksheet um, that gives you guys all of the pictures, not the worksheet that you fill in. And there'll be a picture of a balance with a piece of aluminum foil on it, and it'll tell you how much that weighs. But here, we see that we've got 1.5 grams of magnesium. So we're gonna write 1.50 grams there. And then it says, what is the mass of the copper in the weigh boat or the weighing boat? And this is at the end of the reaction. But the question tells you this. It says you produce 3.15 grams of copper. Okay, so again, this part of it, if you were to do the experiment, you wouldn't get until the very end when you measured your dried copper. But the question goes ahead and gives it to us, so we fill it in there. And it tells us right here, this is our experimental yield. In our experiment that we did, this is how much copper we got. So that's the experimental or the actual yield. Now we have to do some calculations here. And it says, how many moles of copper sulfate do we have? Now this is where we need to use the molarity. And molarity is a concentration. And what molarity is, is moles over liters. That's exactly the same thing. So if you write the big M, you mean moles over liters. So we have to somehow get to how many moles of copper sulfate we have, but what we have, what we start with is 75 milliliters. That's our given for copper sulfate. So we're gonna start there. So we have 75 milliliters and we need to get to moles. And you can see right over here that I just told you that molarity is moles over liters. So we have some information that will allow us to get to moles, except we're not in liters yet, we're in milliliters. So what you guys need to do is change this To that so you need to change milliliters to liters there now the milliliters have canceled out and we're in liters and if we let our units guide us we'd put liters on the bottom and we would put moles on the top 
But moles of what? What are we after? We're looking for moles of our copper two sulfate. Now, do we have a number that goes next to the moles? Yes, we do. It's back here. We have a one molar copper sulfate solution. So that means you have one mole of copper sulfate for every liter. So if I had 2.00 molar copper sulfate solution, that would mean I had two moles of copper sulfate for every one liter. Okay, so going back here, we have one mole of copper sulfate per every one liter. And again, that's the same thing as saying one molar copper sulfate solution. Exactly the same thing. Okay, so that's gonna cancel out our liters and that's gonna give us our answer right there. So if we pull out our calculator and we multiply 75 times one, that's gonna give us 75. And if we divide that by a thousand, what we're going to get is 0 0.075, and we're gonna to wanna to stick a zero on the end there, so we stick with three significant digits. Now the next line says moles of aluminum, and so you guys will figure out the moles of your aluminum, but because I don't have aluminum, I have magnesium, I have to figure out my moles of magnesium. Now the magnesium is a metal, it's not in a solution where we would have a concentration like molarity, so we're just going to do it the regular way that we've been practicing, which is we're going to take the weight of it the mass of it, which came from right here. So we have 1.50 grams of magnesium. And when we have grams and we wanna go to moles, we use the what? The molar mass. Okay, so for every one mole of magnesium, we have a certain mass of magnesium, and where do I get that? right off of the periodic table. So I look at the periodic table and it says magnesium weighs 24.31. Okay, so I've canceled out grams of magnesium and I'm already in moles of magnesium. So all I have to do is 1.50 divided by 24.31. And what I'm getting is 0 0.0617. And I don't want to forget my labels. So we have moles of copper two sulfate there. And I have moles of magnesium here. Now, the next line says theoretical yield of copper based on amount of copper two sulfate we have. Okay, so that is just taking the first calculation and continuing on to mass of copper. So you guys can just continue on from right here or we can write the entire thing over again. And that's what I'm gonna do just to run through it again with you guys. So you're starting with a certain amount of copper sulfate. So in my experiment, I had 75 milliliters. In your experiment, you'll probably have about 100 milliliters. But the math process is exactly the same. Just adapt it. So we've canceled out milliliters, we've gone to liters. And now we're in moles of copper sulfate. And we want to get from copper sulfate to copper. So we need a mole to mole ratio. So for every one mole of copper sulfate, I'm going to produce one mole of copper. Now, where did I get the one over one from? 
I got it right off of the balanced equation. For every one copper sulfate that I consumed, I produced one copper. Now again, in your equation, you might have different numbers there. You might have a two and a three or a two and a one. So be very careful there. You might not have a one-to-one -one ratio for your multiple -mol ratio. Now we have to go to mass. So what we're gonna have is one mole of copper on the bottom here, and we're gonna have grams of copper on the top. Now, where do I find that? On the periodic table. So if I look at the periodic table, I have 63.55. Okay, so liters cancel out, moles of copper sulfate cancel out, moles of copper cancels and what we get after we do all of this is I calculated let's see 4.77 grams of copper so with the amount of copper sulfate that I had in my 75 milliliters of one molar copper sulfate, I got 4.77 grams of copper. Again, you might have a different volume that you used and you might have a different mole to mole ratio because you're using aluminum. So please don't just copy down this calculation on your lab. Okay. Now I want to know the theoretical yield of copper based on the amount of, and I don't have aluminum, I have magnesium. So what I'm going to do is I can continue on from here, or I can write it again and show you guys, which is what I'm going to do so we can see it again. I need to go from grams of magnesium to grams of copper. So same process, 24.31 grams of magnesium for every one mole of magnesium. And I need to switch between substances. And so for every one mole of magnesium that I consume, I'm going to produce one mole of copper. And where did I get that? I got it right off of the balanced equation. For every one magnesium that I consume, I'm going to produce one copper. Okay, so I've canceled out my grams of magnesium, my moles of magnesium, now I'm in moles of copper, but I need to get to grams of copper. And one mole of copper is going to have the same mass that we had up here because I pulled that right off of the periodic table. So 63.55. And if I do the calculation on this, I'm going to get 3.92 grams of copper. Now I have enough copper sulfate to make 4.77 grams of copper, but I only have enough magnesium to make 3.92 grams of copper. So how much can I possibly make? I can only make 3.92 grams of copper because I only have enough magnesium to make that much copper. So that means that magnesium is what, the limiting reactant or the excess reactant? Well, it's limiting how much I can make, so I will go ahead and put magnesium right there. Now, the excess reactant, that's gonna be the reactant in excess. So what am I reacting magnesium with um, to get copper, but I've got extra? Well, that's the copper to sulfate. Please do not put a product in one of those boxes it specifically says reactant here, you guys. What, what reactant do you have in excess? What reactant is limiting how much product you can make? 
Now the black boxes should indicate to you that you don't have to do anything there and that's because we did all of the calculations here and here, okay? So the next line says, what is our percent yield of copper? So for percent yield, we're going to need to have our actual yield over our, sorry, our, <clears throat> oh, I said that right, actual yield over our theoretical yield. And our actual yield um, is also called our experimental yield. So percent yield equals actual, which is also called experimental over theoretical times 100. So theoretical means in theory, you could possibly make this max amount. And that maximum amount is right here. That is your theoretical yield. The limiting reactant will dictate your theoretical yield. Your theoretical yield is your possible 100%. You can't make more copper than that. If you get a weight on copper that's more than that, you probably have water in there or some kind of other impurity. Anyways, what did we actually get? Well, we actually got 3.15 grams. And where did I get that? Right here. The question says I produce 3.15 grams of copper. And my theoretical yield is 3.92 grams. The grams cancel out. And I multiply that by 100, and what I'm going to get is 80.4%. And then I'm done with the calculations, and I say, yay, and I go and I answer the questions. Okay, you guys, I hope that helped. If it didn't, um, hit me up for some office hours. Okay, bye-bye.